Hi guys, today I would like to talk to you about Pyrite because there's a lot to talk and to learn about Pyrite. In case you ever want to buy Pyrite, you need to know the terms used by Pyrite diggers like me. And of course, I'm accompanied by my most precious, biggest Pyrite crystals. But before we start, I want to open this uh, YouTube video with a quiz because I, make, I need to make sure that you guys are awake and that you are following me, that you are focused on what I'm telling. So the first thing is a question to you. Now imagine these pyrite would not be here and you would just see me, because with a pyrite it's too obvious. How could you just by looking at me identify that I work with pyrite? Just imagine the pyrite is not there. So just look at me and tell me why would you immediately see that I work with Pyrite? Well, I make that question a lot of times to people and I get a lot of answers because the guy has a Pyrite uh, jewelry hanging around. As you see, I don't have a Pyrite jewelry hanging around. So what is the obvious answer? Look at the fingers. Because if you work with Pyrite, Pyrite is very dirty and you just can't keep the fingers clean. So. Everybody that works with pyrite has fingernails like this. So, when you see this video, I'm not dirty, it's just profession. Everybody that works with pyrite gets really dirty. It's a dirty mineral, it's a mixture of sulfur and iron, and when you polish and cut that, it's just going to be dirty. But now, they are all cleaned up, and we will show in another video how we work and clean the pyrite. But first we need to know all the terms and what is pyrite. As I said, pyrite is a mixture of sulfur and iron and it forms crystals. Now, what is a crystal? And there comes the next confusion. If you look nowadays into the internet, everything is a crystal. A heart is a crystal, a sphere is a crystal. Everything is sold as crystals but to us that work in, mine, in mines, that is not really applying. When we talk about a crystal, we are referring to a natural formed geometric form. In quartz, that's like a needle. In pyrite, it's mostly like a cube. So that is a crystal. Now, as you see, this stone of pyrite has several crystals. That's why it is called a cluster, a cluster of crystals. So when we talk about crystals, we mean this thing. When we talk about a cluster, we mean the entire thing. So clusters can have different sizes. You can have a cluster like this. You can have a cluster like that. That's a cluster of pyrite crystals. And it's really huge. And you can also have a small one. That's another cluster of pyrite crystals. So the size of the cluster is not important at all for the price of the piece. What is making the price in pyrite is the size of the crystals. So first, let's talk about the different quality levels of pyrite. As we said, they are determined by the size of the crystal. So this here is the lowest quality because the crystals are very, very small. This quality is called quinoa because these crystals are about more or less a millimeter in size, like the grains of quinoa corn. The most of the material that comes out of the mine is this quality. This is why it's very cheap and you actually can't do a lot with that because it doesn't look too nice. So that is quinoa, cheapest quality. Then comes the next quality level, which is chispa. Chispa, if you translate it into English, is spark. And it's called like that because the crystals on this cluster have a size of one millimeter to three millimeters. So they are bigger than quinoa. So this is chispa and you can measure the size of the crystals and it will be one millimeter to three millimeters. So if you buy spheres, hearts, they are mostly made out of this material. And because it's very frequent, it's also still relatively cheap to acquire. So the next level would be top chispa. 
or improved chispa. Now if you look at this, you still will see that most of the crystals on this cluster are between one and three millimeters because it's chispa, but then there are a few in between here that are bigger, that are four millimeters, five millimeters in size. You can measure that on your, on your cluster if you buy one and you will get to four millimeters like here. So this is top chispa or improved chispa because it is chispa with a little bit more bigger crystals in it. Then you would come to the next class of quality which is then called cocara in Spanish. I don't really know how to translate cocara so just let's stay with the word cocara. Now when you have cocara then most of your crystals are like five millimeters to six to seven millimeters in size. And again, we can measure that and we will see the size. So this would be cocada. Now cocada is already becoming rare. It's rare to find cocada. So the price of cocada in the market is going up. It's much higher. It's probably three times the price of chispa or four times, depends. So that is cocada. And then of course you would get higher. You would get to improved cocada. And you see now on this one, the crystals are already really big. So these crystals can come up to a centimeter, 11 millimeters, 12 millimeters, and they are very well, well formed. And of course, this material is even more rare than uh, cocada. That's why it's called top cocada or improved cocada. So these are the five more commercial levels of pyrite, where prices are relatively accessible for everybody. But then, of course, you get sometimes really, really big crystals, like this one. This is a single cube. Well, actually, it's not a cube, it's a rectangle, no? because pyrite doesn't make cubes. The sides are different in, in length, so actually, pyrite always makes rectangles. But sometimes, like here, they actually look more like a cube. So you can see these are huge cubes, huge crystals, one single crystal on this cluster, so big. So of course this is very expensive. We're talking about hundreds of dollars for pieces like that. Of course, sometimes they're a little bit smaller, but you can already see this is one single crystal, much bigger than what we had before. So it's bigger, it's more rare, it must be more expensive. Now, we don't stop here with pyrite. Yeah? Pyrite in Peru, because of the geology, makes not only different sizes of crystals, it also has different shapes of crystals. Everything that I showed you up to now is cubes or rectangles. But there is another shape pyrite can form here in Peru, that is an octaeder. An octaeder means octaeder eight sides. It's a double pyramid if you want to say. It's a pyramid up and a pyramid down and that looks like this. So this is a beautiful example of octaeda crystals in pyrite and these are very rare. These are really really rare to find and these here are even more rare because mostly if you find octaeders they are not very shiny. They're kind of something is going wrong there with the process and they're not shiny. So this is an extremely shiny octaeder and a very rare piece to find. So because the shape is rare, price of this is going higher. And then there's a third form, a third shape of crystal, which has a terrible name. It's called pyritohedron. Pyritohedron. It needs some practice actually to get that word out of your, out of your mouth but it's kind of bubbly. It's like a bubble, a round shape, but with a lot of flat sides. So this is a top example of pyritohedron. You can see that on both sides here, and also mixed with beautiful white uh, crystals of quartz like this guy. This guy is covered in pyritohedron crystals, in these bubbly round crystals. And this is rare, and this is very expensive especially if it's mixed with uh, white crystal. So a piece like that on a high collector's fine mineral shop can easily go into thousands of dollars, not hundreds. 
So these kind of crystals, of course, they can also grow very big. They can become really big or even more bigger here. So you see there's a lot of variation in these kind of crystals and we don't stop there. Pyrite is very complicated because in our pyrite you will find on the cubes these lines. So that is called striated. It's a striated crystal. So how can that happen that these crystals are striated while the pyrite that you get from Spain are perfectly flat uh, cubes? Now ours are uh, striated. Well, it's really difficult to explain chemically. So let's make that very easy and with a kind of a ridiculous example. Let's say it this way, the crystal when it grows micro layer by micro layer doesn't know what it wants to be. It doesn't know if it wants to become a cube or if it wants to become a pyrohedral uh, crystal. So every layer microscopically grows in a different direction with a different axis and that makes the lines. And that happens to you when you don't know what you want in your life. You're just not going to be fancy and, 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 and smooth. You're going to be strident <laughs> because you're going back and forth and back and forth with your decision. And that's how these crystals are growing. And that's very special for Peru. You can recognize Peruvian crystals by the striated uh, surface they have. And if you see the crystal, the lines are not going always in the same direction. Actually, each side goes into a different direction. So this is striated crystals. And we're still not finishing. Pyrite also can take a lot of variations of shapes and sometimes get very, very odd shapes. I have two examples of that here. This is a pyritohedral crystal, but totally flattened. If you look at this, it's like as if you would have stamped on it and flattened it. So that's a very rare shape to find. It's the first time I have something like that actually in my collection. And it also can be completely fractured. So this is an example of a completely naturally fractured crystal. Yeah, so you see all these fractures here, very strange shape. And last but not least, there's another process going on because if you look at this, for example, this piece and you turn it around, you see that this has been broken off a wall. Now this was not the miner hammering on it in the mine. This is a natural break off. Why is that a natural break off? How can we see that? Because this piece has been broken off and here you see on the breaking surface it starts to be shiny again. So this process when it on the broken surface it starts to get shiny again is a recrystallization process. It means that piece has been fallen off, has been lying around like that and down on the surface the pyrite starts to crystallize again and starts becoming shiny again. So that's a natural break off in a cave. And you can see this beautiful shine on this broken surface. So yeah, all these are criteria for price. If it's broken off, if it's a recrystallization, if it's a cube, if it's an octaedra, if it's a pyrite or hedron, if it has quartz, the size of the cluster, the shape of the cluster, the beauty of the cluster. It's a never ending variety of criteria that in the collector's level determine the price. So actually in the collector's level, there are no real rules. While you can have a piece like that, that is, uh, chispa, you can have that for a standard kilogram price. As soon as you get into the collector's level where all these factors play a role, basically who owns the crystal puts the price and you can either accept it or not. And it's like the experience of people like us that mine and find crystals and they know how rare a piece is or not. They see the different beauty of all these pieces. We do determine the prices for that on the collector's level. And basically when we sell, there's no discussion about price. I mean, that's the price you like it, you buy it. You don't like it, you don't buy it. And these are prices, as I said, from the hundreds of dollars to the thousands to the ten thousands of dollars, depending on the piece and the size. As I said, this guy is the biggest I ever found. This beautiful thing is 66 kilograms. 
probably one of the biggest pyrite crystals in the world, my clusters in the world, to be available. And we have all these variety here in our store. We're selling to final clients, we're selling to collectors. If you shop, you can buy from us. You will get the pyrite sold as flats or single pieces. And I just thought it is important to make a video to clarify all these terms and qualities because it takes a while to learn all this and to appreciate the differences. And I'm just hoping that I could help you learning a little bit more about pyrite and making better, better sales and, better, and buy better your pyrite because you now know a lot about pyrite. So you know a lot of differentiation. And yes, we'll try to produce some more videos about this and other crystals and I hope to welcome you to these videos. Please subscribe to our channels to stay updated and thank you for listening.